you had your chance, and then you blew it. That is the most absurd statement of the year. Noise. <laughs> Noise. Oh, baby. I'm in my zone. I'm feeling it. Live from Rock Solid Studios in Granite Falls, it's time for Minnesota Sports, live with DJ Matty C and Paul the Shield Vold. And this is Minnesota Sports Live. We are back. Yes, claps all around. We are back for another fun show for the zoners, for everyone from Rock Solid Studios here in Granite Falls. And without further ado, I'm your host, DJ Matty C, a.k.a. Matt Callan, a.k.a. Callie, a.k.a. Matty C, etc., 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 and all the way from Woods and Shores Studios in Aiken, Minnesota, Paul Volt, the Shield. What's going on, Shield? You know, it's been a rough first half of the week, but luckily enough, I was able to get home and uh, finish up watching my second viewing of The Last Dance. Needed a little bit of inspiration. I got it. I'm ready to go, and we're looking forward to another great show as always. So basically, we're, we're going to be like the 98 Bulls today. Try to. Yeah, we're going to try to. We're going to try our best. We got a lot of fun uh, ahead of us. We we're, we got some tater top. Hot take. But then we have table topics. Table we topics. Do. We have three really good ones. Voldy and I were talking before the show about a couple of them, and I think the zoners will love them. Make sure to give us your thoughts any time of the show because, hey, we'll get it online here for you because why the heck not, as the Curve Doctor likes to say. But without further ado, it's time for some, uh, you know, that that, that that one that one segment that we all like. It's called Tater Top. <laughs> He, ah, man, that's hot, tater tot, hot take. Fresh out of the oven, it's tater tot hot take. All right, it's time for some tater tot hot take. Uh, a lot of people chiming in here, you know, Ethan says, hey, boys, what up, Ethan? Glad that you're tuning in here. And uh, Chris Seymour, that's him. Shield about to challenge management like Jordan challenged Kraus. Ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> because why not, right? Oh, man, it's too funny. All right, anyway, moving on to uh, Tater Tot Hot Take. Here's the first one, okay? The Minnesota Vikings people, of course. Uh, it, was a, it was a rough ugly win there were some good things there are some bad things about this but i i tell you what a win's a win uh the vikings shouldn't have even though they definitely should have blown this team out because they had no reason of winning that game or winning that game and kirk cousins and the minnesota vikings the offensively, they did some good things and some terrible things defensively, offensively. Kendrick's being hurt right before they're about to get going. And that first drive, I thought, oh boy, this could be trouble. This could be trouble, Shield. So, uh, Voli, first, let's start off with what are your thoughts on the game? And then uh, we're going to move on to something a little bit different that we're going to do with Tater Todd Hot Take. So, Voli, what do you think? Yeah, I, it just from the very beginning, as soon as you saw Kendricks get hurt before even the 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 opening kickoff, you knew the Vikes were in trouble. Yeah. Then that opening drive with the most Harlem Globetrotters, Murphy's Law, when it rains, it pours situation comes about. Tip three times and it lands right into the guy's arms for a touchdown you knew it was going to be a rough day for the Vikings. They did absolutely everything that they could to lose the game, causing turnovers, and also the fact that, you know, Dan Bailey wasn't even remotely as good as he can be. And again, the Vikings did just about everything to lose the game, but somehow come up with a win, and we can't even blame it on Kirk Cousins. 
We literally can't. That's the best part of the whole situation. That's the win in this one because the fact that Kirk Cousins actually played a really good game. The Vikings are at 500. It came in the weirdest of all circumstances overall. But, I mean, the fact that you almost lose to a now 1-11 team in the AFC South is atrocious, first off. And the fact that they came out with a win, I was just happy to see them get back to 500. And I literally kept saying every time Jacksonville kept making plays, this team is one and 10, one and 10. And it was just unbelievable. The fact that they're able to win this one. Yeah. And for one, they, they went into this game and I think a lot of the, I I just feel like anytime the Vikings play a team that they should just destroy, they, they play down to their level. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. They, the Vikings played down to Jacksonville's level. And Mike Glennon had some nice passes, but he had some terrible passes. Yeah, Chris Boyd's got to learn how to catch the freaking ball. Um, he's got to pick off the ball. He can't let the ball bounce off his hands like it did. Um, he can't. Apparently, he just keeps blaming it on, you know, X, Y, and Z. No, just intercept the freaking ball, okay? <laughs> Can but, we cut Chris Jones already, too? Chris yeah. Chris Jones has been trash yeah chris jones as well i mean the secondary there's one bright spot though and i'm gonna bring it up here a little bit later or very quite close but they they didn't do a great job of stopping the run james robinson we knew going into this it might be a struggle even with kendrick's but without kendrick's i mean james robinson was serviceable at best and right. that's what helped them a lot but you have to shut down that running game and they did an okay job of that and i give them some credit for stepping up like they did because i mean after kendrick's it's pretty much harry uh anthony harris afadi i mean mostly all those veterans you know and Eric Wilson does a good job and things like that, but uh, Delvin struggled a little bit at the beginning as well, and the run game, it took a little bit before the Vikings could get going. And Delvin Delvin was catching, you know, passes, out, and then the, the interception, you know, like, do we blame that on Kirk? Do we blame that on Cook? I don't know. I feel like that play design was for Cook, so Cook maybe should have turned around at the right time to, you know, look for the ball. But, right. again, an interception's interception. They score a touchdown off that. But the Vikings kept fighting, and that's what they needed to do. They can't. They couldn't lose this team. So, Volvi, uh, let me ask you this. Because, you know, we talked a lot about how bad, you know, the, how bad def- the defense was on certain plays. Um, the Vikings couldn't get anything going with the run game and everything like that. But who was the guy that most impressed you on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, obviously the fact that, uh, you know, in, in the situation where a guy comes down in Eric Hendricks and you, you find ways to come up with who's going to step up in that situation, obviously it was a team effort overall, but if there's one guy that kind of step, stepped out of the way, it's uh, Eddie Yarborough, I think, on yeah. that D-line in a lot of spots that need filling this year. Eddie Yarborough is one guy. He got activated this past week for this game, and obviously there's going to be a lot of shuffling around on that defensive line. A Fetty comes in as well. You have Eddie Yarborough in the mix now. You know, you'd like to see more of James Lynch in the mix, but he's been hard to find the last yeah. week plus. Uh, you know, there was a lot of a lot of good bright spots, especially in the defensive secondary, besides the fact that, you know, Cameron Dantzler showed up in that contest. He got a pick early. You know, Fetty also contributed and leading to that safety. You know, Anthony Harris. So of course, you can throw in, uh, you know, the likes of uh, Harrison Smith as well. But if I had to choose one, it'd be Eddie Yarbrough from this past Sunday. Hey, that's not a bad pick because yeah. when he – I remember the first game against the Packers, he was like in. I'm like, who the hell is this 52 guy? Like right. Eddie, Yar- Eddie Yarbrough? But, yeah, he had a really good game. And the defensive line pr- played pretty well, which you got to give mm-hmm. some credit to them. And, but for me, I, I think the one guy that stands out to me was the needle. 
Cameron yep. Dantzler. Dantzler was fantastic. He went out there and he proved why he was so good in training camp. And he was coming off a, a very horrific injury from uh, Green Bay against Green Bay. He had that terrible hit that he had on his head, concussion. He was out for a couple weeks. But now I feel like he's fully healthy. He's starting to get a feel for the Zimmer defense. And he had an interception. And that was the first interception for the cornerbacks this season. For one. For the corners. I mean, DB's obviously Harry and, and whatnot. But he did a great job of covering. And also, he was forced he was he forced a fumble for goodness sake. He ripped it from yeah. somebody and there you go, Cam Dantzler, the needle, getting going. He showed us why he was so good in training camp, and let's see what happens. And not to mention, too, Holton Hill was just waived, right? So yep. think about that. Think about that. So they really trust Dantzler. Uh, Gladney, I think, got banged up at the end of the game, so we'll see what his status is coming up uh, against Tampa Bay, but... I was very impressed by Cam Dantzler, and I give him a, a lot of credit for going out there and kicking ass. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Mets has got a good a good joke here. At least KJ Osborne didn't muff a punt. That is true. I was true. I held my breath every single time that that happened. I was like, oh God, please don't don't screw this up. Um, <laughs> doesn't get more Viking than having Eric Hendricks pulling his calf in warmups. Exactly. Well, the one thing that I want to bring up, too, about that is is Kendricks was on the injury report earlier in the week. Right. And apparently when he was doing karaoke, because karaoke in, in warm-ups is usually something that, you, you know, you stretch out the hammies and everything like that. But, like, for goodness sake, he must have taken the wrong step and just aggravated it even more, which is yep. kind of scary to say the least because... I don't know if he's going to play on uh, Sunday and, <laughs> and against TFB and the the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Even though the mm-hmm. Buccaneers have struggled a little bit, but yep. uh, let's let's get into that because um, <laughs> it's a big game for both teams, and uh, whoever loses again might be on the outside looking in for the playoffs. And uh, but looking at the Vikings defense now, if Kendricks doesn't play, I, I just, I don't feel good about their chances of winning on Sunday. So, Voldy, TFB versus the Purple. Yep. Uh, well, I, I'll ask who you're taking a little bit later here, but uh, what are your thoughts on the matchup here uh, uh, against TFB? You know, I don't think this game is going to be as one-sided or as predictable as people think this is going to be. I mean, if the the P- Tampa Bay Buccaneers start with three straight, three straight, three and outs, I think it's going to be a very interesting contest because that's the way the offense has been going for the the Buccaneers. It seems like for the last six weeks, but somehow they're sitting with a winning record in the in the NFC South. They've got a chance to make a playoff spot, although not a very good playoff spot. Uh, the defense has been really banged up, especially in the secondary. Very, uh, very Vikings esque as well. Yeah. They've got a really good playmaking, uh, you know, defensive line, and you know, the front seven has been very strong uh, for them, especially with JPP. You got Devon White in there as well. You've got guys on the back end, Antoine Winfield Jr. making nice plays as a rookie. The offense, they've got more weapons than they know what to do with. It's just getting it all together is yeah. the thing. And unfortunately, this may be the week that uh, everything may come together for old TFB and the Bucks, especially when you throw in Gronk, you throw in Tyler Johnson in the mix, maybe a B you've got Mike Evans, you throw in the guys, there are 17 tight ends. It seems like yeah. Cameron Braid, Eau Claire, <laughs> you, you get guys in there as well. Leonard Fournette on the mix. You get, uh, you know, Rojo, the second two. Uh, even in somebody that hasn't been playing a whole lot, but somebody there that's there as well, Shady. Shady McCoy's yep. down there as well. But, again, hasn't even seen that much action in it at all this week. But I, I think this will be a very interesting contest overall. I'm not quite sure who I want to take in this one, but if the offense doesn't get going early for Tampa Bay, it may be a little bit more towards the Vikings' favor, I would say. Right. And... <sighs> I, I agree with you on the on the stance of 
people think it might be one-sided because Brady and all the weapons that he has. But a, a couple things I want to bring up too, and you know, I'm, I want to stay positive for for, for the mm-hmm. Vikings here. But there, JPP's on the injury report. Um, yep. Chris Godwin's on the injury report. So you take out some of those guys, then okay, so this is kind of looking good for the Vikings. But let's remember that Mike Evans has had some injury issues this this whole year, I feel like. Right. And Antonio Brown, I feel like, is starting to come into his – or excuse me, Clowntonio Brown, I should say, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is coming into his own in the Bucks offense. Now – Levante David didn't practice on Wednesday either. So, again, I, I don't yep. want to sound like, okay, you know, this is looking really good for the Vikings. Because, honestly, I, I feel like Todd Bowles does a great job with the, the Tampa Bay defense, and I give him a lot of credit yep. for that. I like Todd Bowles. And and they have some pretty good cor- – uh, by the way, Antoine Winfield Jr., I think that name rings a bell, I would say. So think about that. You have a lot of good, you know, defensive backs on that team. Now, how is how are Kirk and um, the how is Kirk and the offense going to handle that? I mean, the the Tampa Bay defense is really good against the run. I think they're number one yep. against the run. So Dalvin, I, I think there's going to be a lot of short passes out to Dalvin and things like that. And then they're going to try and utilize Jefferson. Now I feel like. This is a game where Todd Bowles is going to focus in on Jefferson. So this yep. could be a big Adam Thielen game, which I, I it feel like it, it, it very well could be. But I just, for some reason, any time that the, you, you look at all the records that Justin Jefferson's breaking right now, and he, they're going to key in on him, and they're going to try and you know do some things and try to make sure he doesn't burn them because – if you right. get JJ gone, it's hard to stop him, right? As we've mm-hmm. seen in these games. So I think this could be a big Adam Thielen game and things like that. This might be a very high scoring game because of it you know, could. With, it very well could with, with uh, Kendricks being out and and whatnot. But Tom Brady hasn't done well with the the long ball, the intermediate, yeah. the intermediate, the short passes have been great, but. That's going to be the big question. Can the Vikings exploit that with, you know, their secondary? And I, I feel like they can. Dantzler's got to be on top of his game. Uh, Gladney, if he's healthy enough, should be out there. Chris Jones, I don't feel uh, great about. But, again, I feel like Zim has got a game plan. He's going to figure something out to uh, get them going. But, Voldy, can I put you on the spot? Who do you got? <laughs> I got Tampa Bay. You got Tampa Bay? Yeah. So. I got Tampa Bay. I want to be proven wrong, but I also want to cover my ass at the same time. <laughs> exactly. I and... just think there's just too too yeah. many opportunities, too many outside weapons for Brady to work with. We're talking about the fact that the long throw isn't working, but this may be the game that it breaks out. I don't know. Could be a, a running attack kind of effect as well because it just seems whenever Tampa Bay would get going and try to work uh, the, the passing game a little bit more, it's when when Ronald Jones the second has been rolling offensively. So, I mean, it, honestly, it's a coin flip, but obviously the coin's coming up Tampa Bay for me. So, The fact that it's at Tampa Bay, I feel like, yeah. gives it a little bit more luster. and. Todd Davis did a pretty good job in Kendrick's spot, but again, it's mm-hmm. not Eric Kendrick's. The one of, or I, I, probably the best uh, middle linebacker in the NFL with uh, how he's been playing, best coverage linebacker I've seen in a while. But um, if he miraculously plays, but I don't know, I wouldn't want to rush a calf injury like that because th- those are pretty serious. But. Yeah, yep. I think I'm leaning towards Tampa, and here's the thing. I want to be proven wrong, and this Absolutely. is here. This is a Kirk Cousins game. This is a Kirk yep. Cousins go out there, earn that money, okay? And defensively, you know, they're going to do what they can. They're going to do what they can against TFB, and I feel like TFB is going to have a big game. I feel like Antonio Brown might, a uh, Clontonio might have a shot here too. So we'll see what happens, but... When we come back here next week, Voldy, and if the Vikings win, 
Oh boy, watch out! Yeah, <laughs> that's all yeah. I gotta say. It also plays well in the playoff standing yeah. too, because the fact you know the Vikings and Tampa Bay they're not too far apart. And then the way that Arizona has been playing too, they they've mm-hmm. been kind of falling off a little bit. So exactly, we'll have to see what happens. All right, so that'll conclude our Vikings talk. But hey, we got one more because oh, did you know Voldy the Gophers are back uh, this this week against Nebraska. Uh, yeah. Well, after this whole Love COVID, that. you know, situation, man, I they're going to be shorthanded though. Uh, I I mean, re- before before the show, I, I I was reading the article uh, here saying like more than 20, 20 yep. Gophers will be unavailable against the um the the Cornhuskers. And nearly 50 players and staff members have tested positive for the coronavirus. 15 individuals tested positive November 24th. 10 tested positive the 25th. 15 more tested positive November 28th. Now, again, Nebraska hasn't played great either. And Nebraska, I feel like, is a team that's just kind of like, they're really good one week or they're just really terrible the next. Yeah. <sighs> No Rashad Bateman either, Voldy. I, I just I don't feel good about the Gophers' chances and really the Gophers' chances at all the rest of the season, even if they get to the end of the season with how many yeah. coronavirus cases. But again, they want to be um, you know, safe and whatnot. But uh Voldy, I don't feel confident. What do you think? Do the Gof- do you think the Gophers can pull one off here against Nebraska? I mean, if this was if this was going to be any game where the where the Gophers come up with something, this would be the one. Obviously, the fact both teams not really sure what's going yeah. on in the world right now. The one crappy part about this whole thing is you don't know who's out for the Gophers. Yeah, it could be any combination. It could be Tanner Morgan. It could be the whole starting secondary. For all we know, we have no idea. That's the at least I don't know, and I haven't seen anything saying that Tanner Morgan is out. But I would assume, due to anonymity and of course COVID protocols and everything, we wouldn't find out until game day or at least very close to. It's still early. It's only Wednesday. They play Saturday. I don't feel very confident, but at the same time, the way 2020 is gone, I wouldn't see. I wouldn't even put it out of the realm of possibility that the Gophers pull one out here yeah. against Nebraska. I mean, I've seriously seen weirder things this year yeah and again with with all everything that's been with the coronavirus you know spikes and and whatnot they i feel like the gophers could come out a little bit um motivated and i i think fleck will have them motivated you know he he says all the right things in his press conferences and things like that um you know, he was saying, as of right now, everything changes by the minute, but we plan on playing Nebraska on Saturday, and we have prepared accordingly. Well, here's the thing. I love me some P.J. Fleck, row the boat, Scott Umago, Gophers, but I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> that's that's the sure. big thing is I'm going to hold them to that because they they haven't had a good season. Rashad Bateman's like, uh, this isn't going anywhere. I'm out. But he did get enough to show, hey, you know what, he's, he's around one. He's a... He's a round one wide receiver in uh, the NFL draft this upcoming year. So, right. it, and again, Nebraska has been kind of, you know, weird with everything that's been going on with them with the coronavirus and whatnot. But I, I feel like the Gophers might come out motivated. And if they won it, like you said, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. So, um, anyway, uh, moving on, uh, just kind of going back, going back here because a lot of the owners are chiming in. Um, Bruce Arians gets fired. Who is the Tampa Bay's Buccaneers first call for head coach? Two options. Eric Bieniemy or Byron Leftwich. Called it. Yep. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Uh, yep. The games the Vikings have struggled are when they cannot run the ball. Exactly. Buccaneers yep. have a great run defense, so I see the Bucks winning. Right. I agree with you, Seymour. 100%. Um, Wonder if Coyle will show up to the game, unlike sixty minute, <laughs> like the sixty minutes interview. <laughs> well, yeah, they didn't really show a whole lot of love for Minnesota on that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. All right. H I P A A law prevents 
the divulging uh, of someone's health information without their consent. So that's the reason why we haven't heard anything. So that would make a lot of sense. Um, I'm no doctor, but I'm yeah. pretty sure that's a rule. Yeah, pretty <laughs> sure that's a rule as well. So yep. we'll leave it like that, and we'll see what happens. But, again, you know, it, Minnesota Minnesota in 2020, there's been good, there's been bad. I mean, it just it's, yeah, it's been a crazy year. You deal with it. It sucked, but yep. that's what we got. <laughs> That's what we've got. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, I think it's time for some table topics because we have a lot of them. I have three three of these bad boys ready for the zoners. Maybe four. We'll see how far we get. But you're going to enjoy this. You're going to you know, comment in. Give us your thoughts, what you think, and whatnot. So let's get it going for some uh, uh, table topics. Let's get it. The tables have been set. It's time for Minnesota's Table Topics. All right, it's time for some Table Topics. Voldy, I got three of them for you and the zoners. So let's so get So excited it. about this. I know. Oh you just, you, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, is Mama Callahan just knows, knows us too well. And yep. the first one I got for you, Voldy, and our zoners, what new sport would you like to try, Voldy? Yeah, you know when you when we were first talking about this, I had a couple pop up in my okay. mind. Yeah, you know, and I went through a couple different angles. Maybe a sport I didn't try growing up or doing anything. I would say football, because mm-hmm. the fact I never played football growing up. Sure, wasn't really into sports growing up all that much. But wow, I would probably do that. At this day and age now, at the age of, what, what am I now, 26? <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a little tough to uh, try to do that without seriously hurting myself. <laughs> but another sport, maybe I would say, I don't know, the first one that kind of popped in my mind is, um, uh, it's in the Summer Olympics, water polo, I think it is, or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it's very high intense, a lot of swimming. I don't mind, uh, uh, you know getting in the pool a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of different ways it could have gone with this water pole. I think is one of them or whatever it is that, uh, it's basically like handball in the water. Yeah. So I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head. Words are hard at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so we got some of the zoners chiming in here as always. Uh, Ethan, uh, says bandy, bandy. Right. That's, that's one. Um, bring back slam ball. Now slam, slam ball. ball. Do, do yes. you remember that? Oh man, oh, that'd be a God, fun one good. to get uh, to check out. Here, here's another one from uh, Tyler Knutson. More on him later, by the way. Uh, bubble soccer. Ooh, bubble okay. Soccer. So that's another one. That'd be. I got another fun. one. Okay. Lacrosse. Lacrosse. Yep. I, I've yep. always wanted to try lacrosse. Now I just thought of it. I, I just got to find myself a lacrosse stick and uh, lacrosse ball and just start, yeah, you know, throwing it around. Make it work. Um, I guess for me, when I first was looking at this, what new sport would you like to try? I mean, there's there's a lot of options that y- you can go with. Uh, Jimbo, volleyball, volleyball is another one too. I I, I I've played that before. That's a fun game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one one thing that comes to mind for me is uh, badminton. You, you play that in, yeah. in, 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 uh, in uh, gosh, what, gym middle class. school, gym class, right, yeah. middle school, gym class, high school. I had a great time with that. You could either play singles or doubles, and I feel like that was um, that was something that I enjoyed as well. And, man, I, I, I'd i be game for that. I feel like there'd be so many good players, good, uh, you know, players from playing badminton and – you know, diving for, you know, ju- just unreasonably or not even could just, like, oh, you know. But that'd be fun. I mean, badminton's Absolutely. a fun, fun game. Paul, Jay Wright played lacrosse for Johns Hopkins. Ooh, I didn't know that. Fun fact. Fun fact. I like that. Pickleball. Yes, pickleball was pickleball a big was thing for some of our uh, SMSU uh, brethren as well. Absolutely. They played a lot of pickleball and – um it, it, racquetball, I should say, too. Uh, racquetball mm-hmm. was a big one for our favorite Mustangs as well. So, 
Yeah, I, I would probably say badminton's for me. I mean, it's really not a new sport, but... Oh, Mom of Old's got something here. Uh, Didn't you get injured playing badminton in Fayed? Voldy. Yes, I was hoping I was kind of going in between <laughs> if I want to tell the story or not. But yes, I was that kid in gym class that pretended it was, you know, do or die in gym class going to 110% all the time. And yes, I can fully attest I did sprain my ankle one time Oof. playing badminton in high school gym class. And luckily, so far, nobody else has uh, uh, brought that up to this day, <laughs> except for myself right now, and now Mama V at the same time. Thanks, Jane Bo. <laughs> well, th there you have it. There you have it. You learn something new every day, Voldy. So, but anyway, it's, I mean, you, you can. I mean, sometimes, because we play on, you know, the gym floor and whatnot, you know, the hardwood. And, again, yeah, you could get seriously injured, you know, on there, which, again, sometimes yeah, I've, I've had some bad injuries with the, not just badminton, but playing, you know, capture the flag was a big one back in oh, uh, middle school and whatnot. Fun game, by the way, too. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, Zoners, keep chiming in uh, what you think, and then uh, let's move on to our next one because this one, I, I feel like we did this with the sports zone. I, I remember this one. But mm -hmm. this one I feel like a lot of the zoners can chime in on. Um, who, who is the greatest athlete athlete of all time? Foldy? There's one name that always comes up in my mind when we talk about the greatest athlete of all time. It's Jim Thorpe. Jim Thorpe is greatest athlete of all time. Not because of the fact of a time when he played in the early turn of the century, but also he was, in fact, a, a groundbreaker in many fronts. Played professional baseball. Played professional football. He also was an Olympic, uh, you know, Olympic athlete. Won gold medals as well. Had those gold medals taken away as soon as he turned professional all at the same time. And revolutionized the fact of going from an Olympic athlete and also being a groundbreaker because of his indigenous heritage as well. Born on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation out in South Dakota as well. And proudly represented as not only his people, but also the fact that he represented the United States of America in the Olympics to great success. Played in the early days of the NFL, played Major League Baseball as well, and recognized in multiple areas as a true athlete in every sense of the word. I say Jim Thorpe every time. Jim Thorpe was good. I feel like you did say that when we did the sports zone. The man's the got a mascot named after him. That's true. Pine Ridge High School out in South Dakota. Their mascot is the Thorpes. And their, their yeah. girls' athletic teams, they're the Lady Thorpes as well. One of the cool things that I learned about when I was living out in South Dakota for a few years. Hey, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I guess for me, and C. Moore actually just brought this up, Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson I, is another great. Absolutely. I would, honestly, before, and this is before his injury, okay, his, his terrible, awful injury that de derailed his career, not only in football, yep. but baseball as well. Bo Jackson, if you watch that 30 for 30 on Bo Jackson, the guy is ju was just one hell of an athlete. And not only right. that, the guy was massive. He was fast. He was strong. He would run you over. Just ask uh, the boss uh, for one. Um, but he was a guy that I felt like he had it all. He was able to, you know, run people. Over. He could go right by you, okay? Um, another person that kind of comes to mind, too, and this is just from a position group, but Randy Moss, Jerry Rice. Randy Moss, yep. And mm -hmm. just think, if Randy Moss tried as hard as he did, you know, back in... I mean, he would be breaking all these records. Now, he, I mean, he's broken a lot of records, don't get me wrong. But just think yeah. if Randy had the right attitude and whatnot back in the day, he would he'd probably be the greatest of all time. Boy, he had a wide receiver of all time. Obviously, Jerry Rice, too. I mean, Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, and even after that, too. I mean, Jerry Rice was still a force to be reckoned with, which is, you know, crazy as well. Um, 
And then LeBron James, I feel like, not I'm saying he's the greatest athlete of all time, but LeBron James is a specimen. LeBron James freak. is a freak. I mean, the guy is just built, and he's still doing it at a high level. He's won four NBA titles and things like that. It is crazy how good he is, how big of an athlete he is, and just he's unbelievable. I mean, and people like to rip on LeBron and whatnot, but again, he is one hell of an athlete, and no one can debate that about LeBron. But let's get to our zoners here. Um, let's see. Ah, so many. So many people. All right, uh, Jim Thorpe would agree. Also in the class of athlete, I would put Rocket Richard. Ooh, that's... Richard, it's French. Richard, oh, yes, thank you. Maurice the Rocket Richard. Richard, yes, I mm -hmm. like that. All right, by the time he's done, Mike Trout will be in this debate. Ooh, now, now that's kind of a, yeah, I mean, that, that's in there. But if he can get in the playoffs. Yeah, well, that. that's a good point, too. He might have to, <laughs> he might have to uh, get out of there or get out of uh, 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 Los Angeles or the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, whatever the heck, you know. But uh, Seymour says here, they only allowed you to use two plays in Tech Mobile, Bo Jackson, because gaming system felt it was just too unfair to give him three plays. So true. So we got to think about that one. <laughs> All right. Uh, LeBron James, as Eric says right here. <laughs> I love that. Uh, that. That is a great uh, uh, vine as well. Um, better question is how, you, is how do you define athlete? That's true. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's another one as well. I mean, how do you define it? Um, and here's here's uh, Jimbo, and Jimbo knows all, I feel like. Um, Wayne, Gretzky, Bobby Orr, hockey players do on a blade <laughs> do on a blade of ice. Enough said. That's a good True. point, Jimbo. That's a very good point. Uh, Moss and Rice, seriously? They are just wide receiver. Just a football player. Fine for seven seconds at a crack, but no, no, no. Football player belongs in this discussion. Well, I'm just saying, I'm. they were really good athletes. I mean, Moss played basketball uh, in high school at Rand University and things like that. I mean, that, I'm just saying. Um, plus one. But, I mean, it's it, you got you to gotta think about you know, what they did, too. I mean, you know, Moss easily could have played basketball, too. Just saying. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. But I Wasn't forgot. a bad baseball player either, too. Yeah. Yeah. Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, Tyler. Yeah, good. no. Yeah, no. All right. So, uh, one other thing. Did we talk about the GOAT? MJ. I'm about to get to Have that to. in a second. Now, okay. This might be controversial. But this is what the fact has. I forgot to read the other facts, so I'll get to that in a second. Nothing was more beautiful than Moss throwing up the hand when he was on a street route. LOL. Exactly. I mean, he just so would, true. I mean, he was just that good and, and whatnot. But according to ESPN.com, and this was probably, you know, whenever they made this. Again, these are a little bit Jack old. Yeah. But uh, number five, and Jimbo even brought this up, Wayne Gretzky. Okay, so mm -hmm. Wayne Gretzky's up there. Number four, no one's mentioned this guy yet. Jim Brown. Jim Brown was yeah, an Jim athlete, Brown. man. Yeah. Okay, and I feel like he was, he, he's definitely up there. Number three, Muhammad Ali. And, and you know, I, I think Muhammad would be up there. I mean, boxing, I mean, that's, it takes a lot of effort, I, I tell you that. For as much. long as he did it, yes. too, also. You got to put that in there. Right. Number two is Babe Ruth. Isn't that interesting? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the greatest athletes of the 20th century. And, again, back to what Seymour said. How do you define, you know, athlete and whatnot, too? So, I guess they're taking into account the numbers, I guess. Yeah, I, I would probably say that's how they're doing this, too. Number one is, and I, I believe uh, Eric talked about this, Michael Jordan. And yeah, you can see you can see that definitely, but again, yeah. it depends on what you you know define as athlete and whatnot. But I want to go back to um, I want to go back to the uh, what did we have? Oh yeah, the new sport you'd like to try. So the new sports in 1972, wakeboarding came out, and I don't think anyone mm. mentioned that. 1977, kiteboarding. Okay. Oh okay yeah yeah yeah. 
1979 bungee jumping. Okay. 1981 paintball. Wow, I, I didn't know paintball went that wow. far back. I would say. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, 1984. Hacky sack. Now you mm. you play that in a lot in elementary and middle school and whatnot. Oh, yeah. People, you know, people uh, doing that as well. So that's all. Ali is pretty credible, and I agree. I, I 100% agree with Ethan on that one. Um, and then uh, here, come on, there we go. That's what I want to show everybody. Uh, what the babe, the guy who ate Hunter cheeseburger and smoked a cigar <laughs> in between innings. I'm not joking. This is what it says. Uh, this is this is exactly what it says, if you can see it. I mean, I'm just going by what it says here, right? I, I, yep. Apparently, they would have to define athlete by their impact on specific sport. They're, that's the only way Babe Ruth gets in there. Exactly. And I, it depends on what you think of it. So, anyway, let's uh, go to played a lot of paintball. It was fun. Yeah, paintball is a good time. Good time. Oh, here's Mets. Mets has got a good one. John Daly, goat. Just hit hard, baby. Hit it hard. Grip it and rip it. Let it fly. No Absolutely. filter. That guy has no filter. I will say that. All right, last one, Voldy. Um, which is your favorite? And to the zoners, which is your favorite Olympic event? Ooh, you know I've had some time to think about this good. one, but if there's one Olympic event that I will always get excited for, no matter what, it is the Winter Olympics curling. Curling is what gets it done for me in the Winter Olympics. Yes, I do watch the the ice hockey games and everything, but man, curling is awesome to watch. I have zero idea on what's going on, but all I know is those guys are super hyped up, no matter what it is. Team USA, Team Canada always comes down. The, you throw in the Norwegians, the Swedes in there as well. Always some great matches to watch, and I always enjoy watching Olympic curling. Curling, I feel like, is the most underappreciated one, I feel like, at yep. the Olympics. But a lot of the zoners have chimed in, and uh, Tyler's asking summer or winter. I say any uh, any event, uh, summer, winter, whatever you, whatever you feel like. Uh, Jimbo says bobsled. Jamaica, we got that bobsled team. We love uh, love some cool runnings in there. Uh, but, yeah, bobsled's another fun one. Uh, Eric says women's volleyball. I'd say so. I mean, they, they, there's some – it gets really competitive. Not only – I mean, I mean on the beaches and things like that, I mean, it, it is competitive. Um, oh, yeah. And then, you know, Tyler even said bobsled. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people like the bobsled. I feel like Cool Runnings kind of <laughs> just started that up in a way. Probably. At the same time, too. I got, It is fun to watch. 400-meter run. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's another that's one, too. One. You know, I just feel like uh, – I, I feel like swimming, too, with, with Michael Phelps, I, I feel like was always entertaining to watch and see uh, how that how that would go. Uh, handball. Handball is insane, too. Handball. I mean, awesome to watch yeah, it is definitely. awesome to watch uh water polo i feel like is another one too that i i, mm-hmm. I enjoy um but you know there's always hockey too I, I love watching the usa play in the winter you know when it was still going and whatnot but okay wow okay if we consider non-hockey sports i'm going to gonna go with bobsled luge uh, possibly curling, and in the summer Olympics, I like fencing. Ooh, fencing! Fencing is also fencing. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that one. Um, skeleton, as Mets is putting up here, uh, skeleton. That's another one to throw in there, and it gives you a lot nice, you know, variety as well. And yeah, you know, there's so many fun Olympic events, and the zoners love it too. So, all right, uh, let's get to the fact here: uh, prohibited, uh, prohibited items at the London Olympics. Personal. Ooh. Wireless access points. That's a no-no. Flags of non-participating countries. Well, I feel like that makes sense. No noisemakers. And oversized hats. Oversized hats. Apparently, that's prohibited. Wow. (laughs) The the, the things that you know, and I'll show it to the zoners here too. Prohibitive items, and you got 
personal wireless access points, flags of non-participating coaches. I feel like that that makes sense. Noisemakers, oversized hats. Well, people got to watch the Olympics somehow. You can't be wearing an oversized hat, apparently. So. And I'm sure that list of uh, non-participating countries was probably small to begin with. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give or take, right? <laughs> but, again, it's uh, very interesting. I love doing table topics. Uh, a lot of people are chiming yeah, dude, in. It was so awesome. much fun. Shout out to Mama Callahan for getting this. And uh, we're going to, you know, again, it'll come back again soon and maybe we'll have a guest with us uh doing it with us as well so that was a fun one all right but we have another thing to get to and it is called absurd or approved uh your favorite segment my favorite segment the zoner's favorite segment it is time for absurd or approved it's time for everyone's favorite segment absurd or approved All right, time for A or A. Uh, <laughs> I got actually out of the zoners real quick. Yep. Kazakhstan. <laughs> there's a, there's another country. Well, the queen has taste, so the big hats and loud noisemakers are out. So I get that. Plus, T is probably mandatory. Yeah, that's probably cool. was, yeah. yeah probably <laughs> was. Uh, Chaz Michael or uh, Michaels and Jimmy McElroy taking gold in pair skate. That's another one. Skate to one song and one song only. Yeah. My hump of Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> well, there's that. Oh, my gosh. Great. Throw me some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. <laughs> oh, man. Good time. All right. So uh, it's time to get some air, eh? So, Voldy, why don't you rattle it off for us, please? All right, well, no surprise announcement. The NFL and the Philadelphia Eagles are deciding to make a bit of a change that's going to be under center. It was announced by Philadelphia Eagles head coach Doug Peterson that rookie Jalen Hurts is going to be the starting quarterback, and he will start this Sunday against the New Orleans Saints with the troublesome start to the year for Carson Wentz uh, that has been up to this point of the year. Turnovers like crazy, inconsistency with the offense as well. But the few bright spots that have been, unfortunately, have been with uh, Jalen Hurts coming in for those handful of plays, which he did throw his first NFL touchdown this past mm-hmm. Sunday against the Green Bay Packers and almost leading to a comeback as well. Absurd or approved, the Eagles going with Jalen Hurts as quarterback. And side question, where does this take the Eagles in the NFC least division? <laughs> Well, I know Mikey Ryan has something to say about that, but um, it's got my stamp of approval. Carson Wentz has been terrible. And Carson Wentz, I feel like they've given him all these opportunities to play better, play better, but he just hasn't gotten there. And it hasn't been good for Carson Wentz. And um, another thing that I was going to bring up as well, Wentz or Hurts, the offensive line is severely depleted, which is very, very true. true. And... I feel like you can't all put it on Carson Wentz. And, but at the same time, when you're throwing the most interceptions in the NFL, it kind of tells you, eh, you, you got to get going, man. I mean, this, this isn't something that you can just, you know, go into saying, well, I have a bad offensive line. Well, that might factor in, but still, I, I just feel like, too, you know, he's made some poor decisions. And, he, he really hasn't had much of a wide receiver core to no. work with. I mean, Travis Fulgham, I mean, when he when they started up with him and, and whatnot, Alshon Jeffrey finally just got back. Jalen Rager has just been, you know. A non-factor. A non-factor as well. Yeah. Uh, by the way, they t- uh, the Eagles took Rager instead of Jefferson there, so I just wanted to throw that out there. But uh, a lot of anyway, did weird stuff before Jefferson. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Um, and another thing here too. Uh, so Wentz, so Wentz, and now Hurts. Okay, alliteration makes it palatable. Yeah, that's true. Um, but again, Hurts, I feel like it's going to give them new life. And we'll see what happens with it. We'll see what happens. And, you know, the Packers, eh, you know, they he went down. He did okay. Hale Hurts did a pretty good job against Green Bay. He threw his first touchdown. So the thing saving Hurts is his mobility. 
Exactly. Yep. And I, I feel like that's something you got to put into factor too. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the NFC least <laughs> just had the Giants beat the Seahawks and the professional football team <laughs> that the previously undefeated Steelers put some respect <laughs> on the division this week, at least. Well, that's true, right? I mean, respect the, is given. The respect is given. If you beat an undefeated team and things like that, I mean, it, it, it's working out pretty good. It's working out pretty good for the NFC least. So I give them credit for the Giants beating the Seattle and whatnot. Okay, when Carson has been looking over his shoulder for the last three years <laughs> about his job, and it has taken a toll. That's, that's true. Which I mean, is sad fools. because <laughs> three years ago, he was in the running for the NFL MVP and quite possibly was going to lead them to – I mean, they had him in prime position for the Super Bowl. Nick Foles comes in and cleans up, and everybody forgets the fact that, you know, it was Carson Wentz that got them 80 to 85% of the way there. Right. I mean, yeah. Are they still selling once Jays for 50% off in Philly? <laughs> Probably. Probably are at Shields up in North Dakota, too. Yeah. Man, that's another thing, too. But, yeah, it's got my stamp of approval. They had to make a move, and obviously the Philly fans are impatient, but that's how it is. Volby, what do you think? Yeah, it's got my stamp of approval, too. I just hate the fact that it has to come in a situation like this. Let's see what the young kids got. And if it provides a spark for Carson Wentz to figure his stuff out and, you know, obviously maybe rededicate himself (laughs) and, you know, help do the body a little bit more justice at the same time, maybe it'll help. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Maybe this opens the door for, you know, Carson to uh, go elsewhere. I don't know who's going to take up a good portion of that contract. Uh, obviously, the Eagles are going to have to eat a lot of money since they gave him that four-year, uh, was it, $128 million extension uh, last summer. So, obviously, the Eagles are going to be eating a lot of that contract. But uh, overall, I think this is the right move to make. And if it so so happens to spark the Eagles and spark Carson Wentz and Jalen Hurts ends up doing his job, I don't see why it's going to be a bad thing. Where it ends up for the NFC East, I could see them making a move and maybe jumping over a couple of people. Obviously, the fact that uh, Baltimore beat up on the Cowboys last yeah. night, the, the, the professional football team, the fighting footballs himself down <laughs> in our nation's capital, got a huge win yeah. against uh, Pittsburgh, was big time. And the fact that uh, it was Colt McCoy leading the the New York Giants yeah. over Seattle for that win. I mean, the second half of the year in uh, last quarter, I mean, we're going to see a lot of things happen. I don't know if the Eagles uh, take the division, but I think they'll certainly do a lot better than, uh, you know, their 3-8-1 record suggests. But uh, I could see them maybe finishing in second place. Yes, yeah, same here. And if I were to pick a team right now, I feel like the Giants have actually been playing better out of all of them i mean the cowboys shoot we haven't even been talking about the cowboys i mean they just they're a mess i mean they're absolutely a mess with all the injuries and everything like that if you start talking about my chicago bears i'm out i didn't say anything (laughs) (laughs) but easy bows easy easy man all right uh next one voldy well, some actual news for once coming out of the National Hockey League. We've been saying that no news is good news. Well, some news is actually coming out. Now, the NHL and the Players Association have cleared their financial hurdles as of late, pushing towards the start of the 2020-21 season, starting in 2021. They're now aiming for a January 13th start date with either 52 or 56 game schedule going on that would provide a temporary divisional realignment schedules and even some coronavirus protocols that must be approved by the board of governors and the executive board as well but obviously the fact that they jump over the financial situation heading towards the board of governors certainly leads the way for obviously the nhl season to finally start absurd or approved the plan to make a plan for the 2021 season for the nhl uh well, of course, it's got my stamp of approval because we got to get hockey back and whatnot. So it seems yep. like th- this is making sense. And I got to ask a lot of our you know, hockey experts, especially you, Foldy, and as well as the zoners. Okay, It seems like the NHLPA and then you know, so, and some of the owners as well, um, 
But it feels like they're they're having you know they're having way. They think one thing should go one way. They they think another thing should go that way. I mean, it's it. I don't know what what's been kind of going on between you know both sides. I mean, is it that the players want more money and and the owners aren't aren't willing to give it to them? I mean, Voldy, I, what's the deal with the, with them before you know before they actually got a deal done? It seems like, and they were quoted saying that um, they're finally on a united front. So what was kind of the disconnect? Yeah, I think a lot of it just had to come down to the, you know, obviously the finer details of who is going to be covered and who is going to get compensated for everything that's going to be leading up to it. And obviously the fact, too, you look into it of uh, possibly the 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 bar the collective bargaining agreement that's going to be up here in the next couple of years and obviously the late start of the year there's going to be a lot of money lost as compared to a normal season but it's looking like that things are starting to get a little bit more uh ease as well canada is going to be a tough place for you know especially for the five teams i believe that are going to be coming into this year uh, you know, Canada's still locked down, especially with, uh, yeah. you know, professional teams coming in. You know, Toronto, the Blue Jays had to play in Buffalo. The, the Raptors are now the Tampa Raptors for this yeah. year because they're not going to be playing in right. Toronto. But obviously that's a huge factor of what it's going to be coming down to. But, you know, the the Players Association and obviously the, the league as well are starting to put something together. But if, you know, obviously the fact that, you know, we've got NBA basketball coming back this weekend for uh, for exhibition games. But, you know, also the NHL, there's still a few hurdles still to go. But yeah. obviously, if they get the fact that they can get the numbers crunched and an agreement tentatively put together, it's starting to look a little bit more on the positive side. Well, that's good. And after reading this article, it feels like, um, you know, things are getting back on track. And, you know, it looks like they're figuring out cash flow and everything like that but um uh let's get to our zoners uh i approve the steps taken to get the season underway no there's little in the way of player revenues it's the impact of no fans in the stands and resharing television revenues and the problem of having a canadian border close so the nhl are thinking of creating a canadian only division for this year which would make sense okay Perfect. Which would be cool, and that's yeah. I mean, that's what I felt. That's what I felt like that was going on, and I just you know, it's just all this you know politics of figuring out how this is gonna work and whatnot. So looks like they can get it going. Uh, doesn't help when you have a commissioner who doesn't do anything. <laughs> Ripping Batman. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty much. There you go. That's how it goes. But anyway, yeah, it's got my stamp approval. They got it. Hopefully, get this deal going, and we can watch some hockey. So Voldy, what do you think? Yeah, it's. I mean, obviously that we've got a we've got a potential start date, and you know the big the big jump is out of the way. Uh, it's got my stamp of approval, but obviously there's still a lot of other factors that still need to be coming into you know before the ink is dry on the paper to say, yeah, here we go, here's the start of the season. But you know, I just like to know that there's a potential date to begin with, similar to what the NBA was saying. And not too much longer after that day was announced, the actual season was actually solidified as well. Yeah. So it's got my stamp of approval right now. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. But um, I, I think, you know, this is good news. It's good news. That's all we need to hear right now. All right, uh, next one, Voldy. Yeah, well, we're going to stick with the National Hockey League as we do have the possible opportunity yes. of some NHL teams possibly looking into playing some outdoor games this year as well. Of course, the stadium series, the NHL Winter Classic, not going to be a thing this year. But teams are looking at the potential, uh, such as the Boston Bruins, the uh, LA Kings as well. Uh, just a couple of teams that are looking at possibly partnering up with outdoor stadiums to provide that outdoor game experience and, uh, of course, allow for maybe some small capacities of fans to actually enjoy with the spaciousness of an outdoor game as well. This has been no stranger for the NHL in recent years. Obviously, the big emphasis with the Winter Classic yeah. and obviously the Stadium Series games over the last handful of years. But uh, teams taking that little bit of a proactive approach to, uh, you know, at least get uh, change up the venue a little bit and maybe allow for some fans because of the fact that indoor uh, opportunities are going to be 
uh, few and far between, uh, especially none for the most part, especially in Minnesota alone. But absurd or approved, the teams looking at playing outdoors this year. Well, I, I, it's got my stamp of approval because it seems like, you know, maybe they can get some fans out there, you know, obviously social distance, wear a mask and things like that. Um, but it, it seems like they're trying to, you know, try – try to you know get some revenue you know get some money coming in and whatnot and i i assume a lot of the players love playing outside and i feel like that's it's almost like you know playing at the winter classic and things like that but it seems like there's a lot of stadiums that they're thinking of uh checking out to and uh reserving um one of them being uh let's see nc the nhl ring uh let's see uh la oh okay we got the home home games at Dignity Health Sports Park, home of the LA Galaxy for the Los Angeles Kings, things like that. Um, Fenway Park, Voldy. So there, there there's yep. that being thrown out there. So you got Fenway Park. So yeah, it's got my stamp of approval. I, I feel like if they're able to have some games outside, it'll get the fans excited. And there, I, I mean, again, it, it's it, it's going to make sense at this point. And, and, you know, there's maybe some other ideas that they want to get to as well. So I know Ethan's a big uh, hockey guy, so we got to make sure we get his analysis right here. Approve. I would also point out that without fans, there's no need to bear the burden of huge stadium overhead. That's true. Play on some very nice local ranks. That would make a lot of Might sense. Might as well. Might as well. I don't see a reason why the heck not. Oh. So, yeah, it's got my stamp of approval. They're trying to, you know, uh, get people excited for the season. And, hey, why the heck not? So, Voldy, what do you think? Yeah, there's a lot of different avenues a lot of teams are trying to work for as well. Carolina, Dallas, Nashville yeah. are a couple of teams that want to play multiple games outdoors. I mean, currently as it stands, uh, Carolina is still going to be hosting a stadium series game at uh, NC State's uh, football stadium as well. Of course, things could change if and when the season does start. Anaheim is looking out, uh, you know, to take on the Kings like uh, they play at Dignity Health uh, Sports Park. You know, Fenway is uh, used to holding a couple outdoor games each year, uh, of course, with the NCAA. And, of course, uh, you know, maybe when the Bruins ever host a stadium series game again or uh, yeah. uh, the, the, the Winter Classic, too. Uh, I know the National Women's Hockey League always played a couple of games outdoors as well. I mean, there's still a lot of opportunities. I would certainly like to see it. I mean, there's obviously going to be the opportunity if little and or no fans. At least uh, maybe kick a few extra bucks on some of the revenue sales for television rights, like Ethan was just pointing out there as well. It certainly got my stamp of approval. Right. And, again, you know, the, trying to stay positive here with, you know, the vaccine you know, coming out as well. So maybe that'll help as the months go on. But again, we don't know because again, you know, the <laughs> the virus just, just doesn't go away like that when you get a vaccine and whatnot. We talked about it last week. Any mention of the All-Star game, Voldy? Nope. Not a... Not happening. Not happening. Oh, that sucks. Nor the Winter Classic. Nor the Winter Classic, which sucks because it was supposed to be in Minnesota, right? I mean... <laughs> yeah, Target Field. <laughs> Against the Blues, though. Yeah, mm. that would have been a tough one for him. All right, uh, next one, Voldy. Well, this one kind of made a bit of an interesting note overall. We go to the college football landscape. is The, the big game itself, Ohio State and Michigan, not going to be happening due to an increase of COVID cases within the Wolverines program this past year. The only way that Jim Harbaugh was ever going to beat uh, Michigan, was uh, ever going to be able to beat Ohio State, it might as well be in the amount of COVID positive cases in their program over Ohio State. But this also did represent an opportunity. This game needed to happen for Ohio State. And in order for them to qualify for the Big Ten title game, and well, up until, say, about uh, a day ago, Ohio State was going to be playing in the Big Ten championship game. Now, just coming out here in the last few hours, in the last half day or so, mm. Ohio State is going to be playing in the Big Ten championship because the Big Ten decided to nix the six-game minimum rule for uh, to qualify for the Big Ten championship as well. Now, this is a bit of a two-part – well – it, it was originally going to be, you know, is this going to hurt and or help Ohio State's chances? Now it's going to be a straight-up question. 
about about uh, not only the Ohio State, also for the Big Ten. Did the Big Ten make the right call in changing its rule so that Ohio State could play in the Big Ten championship? Well, I, I feel like that that's kind of absurd with with everything that's you know that just to make sure that you know Ohio State can get in there. And it's again, it's an NCAA bogus thing, you know. But at the same time, too. Michigan was going to get slaughtered. And I, I feel like, you know, Ohio State was going to go out there and kick butt against Michigan, going back to the game here. Shocker, the Big Ten bent over backwards for Ohio State. Right. See, you know, it's it, it's stuff like that that makes me hate the NCAA and not only the Big Ten. I mean, the Big Ten, what the hell? Like, it's like, just because, well, Ohio State, we can put Ohio State in there. But, again, for the game aspect, Michigan was going to get killed, but that's not the reason, obviously. And uh, just reading from what their chief medical officer said, uh, Daryl Conway, this decision is disappointing for our team and coaches, but their health and safety is paramount and will always come first in our decision-making. And, right. again, that that's what they needed to do. And uh, another thing, too, uh, they – they have a test po- positivity rate higher than 5% and a population positivity rate higher than 7.5. So that's not good. That, that's really not good for Michigan after these past seven days. But for the end, for the Big Ten to put Ohio State in there, just changing the rules so they'd be in there, I mean, it, it's pretty evident that that's what they wanted to do. And like you said before the show, obviously you use different words, but it, it's bogus. It really is bogus. So... Uh, I think it's absurd on that front, but it's got my stamp of approval for, you know, Michigan putting the health and safety of the players first here. So, Foldy, what do you think? Well, obviously, that's the, the, the main part is obviously health and safety over everything. But my big problem is with the Big Ten, as they continue to prove that they are the mid-major conference <laughs> with a billion-dollar budget <laughs> that they are, where do you draw the line yep. is the next question obviously the fact you want your best teams playing for the title as well. Sure. Yeah. But in this, but right now there is obviously like in the SEC, the best teams are going to play. You're going to have the ACC championship with Clemson and Notre Dame. Congratulations. It worked out. Life doesn't work that way. As a former colleague once said to me, and I'm going to be changing it up to make it more PG friendly. You got to make chicken salad out of chicken crap is what you got to do. <laughs> And that is what life is all about. The fact that the Big Ten is rewriting the rule book just so that they can have, you know, their, quote, best team playing in the conference title game against Northwestern, which is going to be a great game. Yeah. I think it's going to be a fantastic game as well. Me too. But if it didn't work out the first time, you just can't go and change the rules in order to make sure that your bottom line is going to make sure that you're staying out of the red at the end of the day. (laughs) Yeah. I'm completely I'm completely against the rule change. I don't think Ohio State should be playing in it. That's life. Deal with it. Move on. Justin Fields going to be a top five draft pick in this coming spring. If the NFL draft is going to happen, I don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow, let alone four months from now. Yeah. It's, it's a completely absurd that the Big Ten changed the rule, but it's completely approved. That, you know, for once, Michigan's going to beat Ohio State in something. Maybe not in the best case <laughs> overall. Pardon the pun in case in that point. But, you know, obviously health and safety and wellness for all parties involved is the main point. It's got my stamp of approval. Oh, man. I, I mean, and again, you know, I, I think Har- – and again, if they lost to uh, – if Michigan lost again, which they probably would have – I mean, would Harbaugh be gone after this season? Maybe he will after this season. I don't know. I heard talks as of late that maybe a contract extension will be discussed. I don't know if they're going to sign one or not. Wow. But that was one story. That Harbaugh's looking for an extension. I don't know if they're going to give it to him. I would highly doubt that he would because the, the overall body of work yeah. since he's come back, very less than exciting. We're we're gonna have to keep more tabs on that because if they offer him an, an extension, the guy hasn't beat Ohio State. He was brought there to beat Ohio State, but again, it is what it is. All right, last one, Voldy. 
Well, this is an interesting one that came up with last night's Tuesday night football game between Dallas and Baltimore. It was going to be a much anticipated game for one person on the Baltimore sideline. Yeah. Oh, wide receiver Des Bryant. He was ready to make his return uh, to play against his old team. Still a good amount of players on the Cowboys that played with Des all those years ago. About three years ago to be in point. But about 30 minutes before kickoff, well, they decide to pull him from the field. It was announced that Des Bryant's uh, PCR test Tuesday morning was inconclusive, as was the retest to go along with it. The results came in back Tuesday evening before kickoff in Maryland, and shortly before 7 p.m., he was notified of the inconclusive test, but yet somehow still tested positive for COVID as he was removed from the locker room and placed in an isolation room at the stadium as well. Now, around 7.30, the latest test came back with a positive result, which was at kickoff as well. Now, according to the policy set forth by the NFL, close contact does not include brief interactions such as walking past someone as every player on both teams also tested negative on Tuesday. Now, with this happening, two inconclusive tests, then a positive test, the first thing that popped in my mind is like, Well, obviously, if the two tests came back inconclusive and yet the third one came back positive, whose fault is this for happening? Is it Des Bryant's fault? Is it the Ravens' fault? Is it the lab's fault? Is it the NFL's fault for not making sure the test came back, you know, if he was tested positive the first time? It would have obviously shown itself. I mean, I'm not a doctor. I'm not claiming yeah, to be a doctor, yeah. but obviously you would think at this point with all the amount of testing that's going on. So whose fault is it in this situation Ooh. that Des Bryant didn't get into play and with everything leading up just before kickoff and all and all the hoopla that ensued in that in that uh situation? Well for one, uh Des all one thing, a lot has changed in 2020 with COVID and whatnot. But one thing that hasn't changed is Des Bryant. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and Des just always has something to say. And sometimes Des sh- should think before he tweets because basically he's like, I test pod- positive for COVID. I'm retiring. What? Like, you're just, you're just okay. done? Okay. You just oh, oh, okay. I mean, I understand you wanna you you don't wanna you know spread the virus and, and things like that. But uh, same old does you know going yeah. going out tweeting his thoughts and things like that. And you know people would always talk about how he'd be a you know cancer in the locker room and and whatnot. And obviously you saw it on the sidelines. There's a little outburst that he would have on the sidelines, especially with Romo and um, and uh, Jason Witten and whatnot. But I just wanted to bring that up because Des still hasn't changed. Um, but I, I, whose fault is it? I, I mean, I would probably, by the way that the things have been going in Baltimore, I almost think it's kind of the Ravens because <laughs> the Ravens have had you know all this this COVID outbreaks. You know, Lamar's getting COVID. J.K. Dobbins, Mark Ingram, uh, Mark Andrews. I mean, all these guys. Somehow are getting COVID, and then all of a sudden, you know, oh, by the way, and again, like you said, I'm no doctor either. I don't know, but I feel like the Ravens just really don't have a good um, good setup of, you know, how the testing is going. It's just, I don't know, but <laughs> here you go. Sounds like Kessel, cancer. <laughs> there you go. My man. There you go. So I think it's, well, first of all, I think it's absurd of how it all went down. But again, Des hasn't changed. So, Voldy, what do you think? I mean, everything else you would say it's the Ravens' fault the way the last few weeks have gone. We're playing games on Wednesday. We're playing games on Tuesday. We'll probably play 13 games on a Thursday at some point here in the next few weeks with the NFL season. But ultimately, I think it's the NFL's fault. Because you would think, 
obviously they're running all the tests and making sure that everything's coming back squeaky clean. If anything comes up at anything that isn't positive or negative, you would think, especially in a game that's happening on a Tuesday that had been rescheduled because the previous game had been rescheduled yeah. because that previous game had been rescheduled and the game seven weeks ago got rescheduled <laughs> that they would be keeping as close of an eye on Baltimore as possible. But there's way too many moving parts the NFL, I think, ultimately is at fault for this one. Yeah, and I, I think Matt's even brought this up right here, too. Most workplaces won't let you come back till a negative result. Exactly. So, I don't know I don't know what's happening or whatever, but it's it's got to you got to be on top of this stuff. This isn't something you can play around with. And and again, yeah. it's I mean, this is serious. This is absolutely serious, but Again, I just think whenever I saw this and then Des is like, I just want to sit at home, drink a glass of wine and things like that. I was like, fine, retired. I mean, the you barely did anything anyway, Des. You know, and it's just, I think Des yeah. was perfect for Baltimore because well, their yeah. team is obviously a lot of youth on that team, but they needed an established wide receiver. Yeah. And obviously you'd like to get Des, you know, the ball, you know yeah. 2014, 2015 Des Bryant when he was putting up the gaudy numbers down in the big D, but you know, you get what you get. And obviously, you know, Des of 2020 is not the same as Des of 2017, <laughs> but you know, I figured he was going to be the, the guy down there, but apparently I guess not. The biggest joke about Des's test was that he finally caught something. But <laughs> yes, we did see that. We did see that. Yes, I know. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good. Oh one. man, Matt's too funny. All right, uh, I believe that'll do it for ARA this week. Great job, Voldy, as always. And uh, we got to get to some Shield shout-outs. We got some uh, good ones sure. coming your way. So uh, let's get it going with some uh, Shield uh, shout-outs. Shield shout-outs. All right, Shield, who you shouting out tonight? Well, we do have to give a big-time Shield shout-out to Patriots wide receiver and a punt returner named AFC Special Teams Player of the Week, former defensive back at the Bemidji State University, Gunnar Olszewski, scoring his first NFL touchdown, officially a 70-yard punt return that he had against the Los Angeles Chargers. It also caught a receiving touchdown from Jared Stidham later, later in that custo, uh, in that game for a 45 to nothing win over the Chargers, while also bringing home AFC Special Teams Player of the Week honors as announced today as well. So big-time shield shout-out to the Gunner himself, the gun show that is Gunnar Olszewski. Congratulations goes out and a shield shout out to Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson on becoming the fifth rookie to ever reach 1,000 receiving yards in his first 12 career games and also become the first Vikings rookie since Randy Moss to accomplish that same feat, of course, in that famed 1998 season. A uh, big shield shout out goes out to uh, the Jet himself, Justin Jefferson. We do want to wish happy trails, happy retirement to LeGarrette Blunt, as he did announce his retirement earlier this week. Three-time Super Bowl champ, twice with the Patriots, one with Philadelphia as well as he announced his retirement on Saturday, it actually was. Nothing better when I got to tweet out when he was with the Patriots, especially in that season where he set the Patriots' single-season rushing touchdown record at 18 touchdowns. Hashtag Blunt Force Trauma. Happy trails, happy retirement to LeGarrette Blunt. And a guy whose NFL career should have probably not ever happened as well. Of course, uh, most notably coming into prominence when he was at Oregon and yeah. uh, punched that uh, guy uh, against uh, <laughs> Boise State. Yep. And, well, the, the, the career for LeGarrette Blunt got off to a rocky start. But, boy, he sure found a, a nice home in New England, made it happen, three-time Super Bowl champ. So happy retirement to LeGarrette Blunt and also happy retirement, unfortunately, to Blunt Force. And unfortunately, we do have to close out Shield shoutouts this week with a somber Shield shoutout to uh, uh, someone who should quite possibly be in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, former National League Rookie of the Year and AL MVP 
Dick Allen passed away, uh, most notably on Monday at the age of 78, playing with the Philadelphia Phillies and the Chicago White Sox as well. Four-time All-Star in his own right as well. Uh, rest in peace to Dick Allen, and that will do it for Shield Shoutouts this week. All right. And again, a great uh, slate of Shield Shoutouts. Uh, Voldy, before we wrap things up here, uh, for one, do you think, and again, with Justin Jefferson, you know, being the yeah. fifth rookie to reach 1,000 yards, first 12, 12 career games, do you think uh, if, if Justin Jefferson keeps putting up these numbers and just has one of the best rookie seasons of all time, do you think he could teach us how to do the gritty? I mean, do 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 we want to go on TikTok or something and just start doing the gritty and, and all that stuff? I mean, that'd be pretty fun. I don't know. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Mixer, as Jimbo's saying right here. Uh, you got to love that. And, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, it, Justin Jefferson, we're asking you, man, can you teach us how to do the gritty? I'm trying to understand how I'm looking at videos and things like that. Teach us, please. Just feel it. Yeah, you, you just gotta you feel don't it. learn it. You just gotta feel it. Exactly. I think that's probably what he who's does. Gonna do, who's gonna do it better? Is it gonna be the two of us, or is it gonna be Kirk Cousins who does? Oh no, bad? that's a good point. That's mm-hmm. a good point. Thielen tried mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we got to think about that. Um, but anyway, let's get back to some uh, business here. Uh, Q and A Thursdays. Uh, we're still doing them. Okay. Go over to the instas. Ask us some questions. Please. Because why the heck not? Because we, you know, we we're here for you for questions for you guys. So it, it it'll be interesting to see uh, if people go over to the instas ask us some questions. Because why the heck not? Because we want to serve you, the zoners. All right. Uh, another thing, if you don't have your shirts yet, you need to get your shirts. I know a lot of you do have the shirts. Twenty dollars, five dollars shipping. Um, it helps us give you the um the show right on facebook live it helps us keep this on air and and whatnot because we enjoy doing it it's for the zonists for you guys um and then also w2 performance the barbell nerds i would want to say this i i want to say this okay the barbell nerds have but stickers they have stickers, yeah. the Barbell Nerds. They lo- It looks fantastic. I got mine. Voldy's going to be getting his here soon. They're only 2 bucks, so talk to Will Rattel. He can set you up with these stickers. I'm gonna, i got to find a place to put this. So, again, check it out. Only $2. Talk to Will Rattel. He'll get you set up. It's, it's sweet. We love it. But, uh, anyway, also, remember, check out Jack O'Keefe's show. Jack's Junkyard. We were featured on Jack's Junkyard on yeah, we were. Saturday. And, again, it was so much fun talking with Jack. He had to edit out a lot of things because we, we like to talk. We like to talk. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you know, so there's that. All right. Uh, added shout-out, uh, Voldy. Uh, Minnesota Gophers hockey just went 8-0. and Best start since 87-88. to and this You is, couldn't this... pay me to shout-out the Minnesota Golden Gopher men's hockey team. <laughs> Even if you paid me, I will never shout out the Golden Gopher men's hockey team as long as I am still breathing on this earth. We spent 20 minutes on a Viking scene that doesn't deserve two minutes. Ooh, now hold on. That's a little <laughs> that, that that's a little much for me, Ethan. I don't agree with that. Uh, about one. Hey, but good and for not the Gophers. About, they can finally do something with absolutely no fans in the stands. So, right. I mean, hey, good for them. Hey, I can only do so much, right? But uh, again, I again, it's a great start. Eight and zero is a very good start. But again, you know, Voldy, you, you know, UND, you and Jimbo, and whatnot. But hey, that's hey, <laughs> hey, get a get a team name, uh, team name, Nodak boy. <laughs> there is a name. I don't like it, but there's a team name. At least we're not the 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 college hockey team, the North Dakota college hockey team, like Washington is. Yeah, exactly. But. Man, that Vikings thing's got me a little uh, getting going. But no, no, no. Anyway, I mean, again, you got TFB coming up. This is a big game, so you got to throw that out there. But anyway, uh, make sure you check out Jack's Junkyard. He does a great job. Season 2, I believe, is coming up in uh, about a month or so, so make sure you check that out as well. But anyway, uh, great job today, Voldy. And um, another thing, too, uh, we got some things moving in the right direction. Tyler Knutson is setting us up with some 
possible stickers, bumper stickers, and window stickers too. So keep tuned in on that. We're going to be talking with Tyler, seeing if we can work something out with him. So this is North Dakota Sport Zone. <laughs> I don't know. You guys, you guys figure that one out. I, I just, Look, just I, my personal feelings. Callahan, you can talk about Golden Gopher men's hockey all you want. I'll just, you know, I'll just rag on you the whole time. Yeah, I'll let you fine. defer to that. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's fine. I, I'm just, I'm just saying the Gophers. <laughs> hey, if they're they're kicking butt, that's all. I got. that's fine. I mean, I it's totally fine. We'll have to keep we'll have to keep up to date and whatnot with the Gopher hockey team, because why the heck not, as we like to say. But anyway, we got a lot of things coming, so that'll wrap up today's show. And uh, before we get going, though, uh, I got to play one more thing. So, uh, But again, remember, folks, keep in the zone. Allah. Hey, what's up, Minnesota sports fans? This is former Minnesota Viking linebacker Chad Greenway. Just want to give a shout-out to Matt, Paul, and all of the Minnesota crew. Uh, catch them. It's a new podcast, Minnesota, all things Minnesota sports, live. Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. on Facebook Live. Hey, Skull Vikes, appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching Minnesota Sports Live. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for live show broadcast. And as Voldy likes to say, follow us on all the socials medias.